ಶ್ರೀ ಸಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿನಾಥ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಚ್ಚರಿತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿ ಬೈ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಟೆಂಪ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ದ ಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮನಾಥನ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಟೆಲಿಕಾಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಟಿ ವಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ಲಿ ಡಾನ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆಸ್ಪಿರೆನ್ಸ್ ಓಂ ಗುರೂರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರೂರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರೂರ್ ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಡೆವೋಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವಿ ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ದ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಸಬ್ಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಶಾಮಾ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ದಿ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ಸಿಲ್ವರ್ ಬ್ರೆಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ವಾವ್ಡ್ ಟು ಗಾಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಪ್ತ ಶೃಂಗಿ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ದಸ್ ದೇವಾ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಬ್ದ ಶೃಂಗಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಲೀವ್ ಅಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಡೆಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಶಾಮ್ಯ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಸಬ್ದ ಶೃಂಗಿ ದೇವಿ ಅಟ್ ವನಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹರ್ ದರ್ಶನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫರ್ ಇಟ್ ದೇರ್ as ordained by shri sai baba shama took the silver breast and went to vani now devotees might recall that in the previous episode we heard that kaka ji appa vaidya the priest of sabda shringi devi is waiting for someone to guide him or accompany him to shirdi to have shri sai baba's darshan he is anxiously waiting there to carry on the commands of sabda shringi devi and at this juncture shama is been sent by shri sai maharaj to vani isn't this amazing hemat panji has very beautifully described the eagerness of kaka ji vaidya thus a person who is desiring to interview someone will himself make all the necessary arrangements such as where and when to meet the person what questions to be asked during the interview all these will be sorted by the interviewer itself similarly when the supreme soul has willed to bless their devotees by giving their darshan then they make all the necessary arrangements for their arrival the core principle behind this leela is the sant and anant are the same sant means the supreme soul and anant denotes god there is not even an atom of difference between these two they both are one and the same no difference must be seen among them is the first thought when a devotee is willing to have the darshan of the sant the anant that is god himself makes all the required arrangements secondly if a devotee thinks that he on his own choice could have the darshan of the sant then that thought is purely a reflection of his pride it's a very wrong notion says hemat panji it's the benevolence of the god that takes a person to enjoy the grace of the guru meeting of the guru takes place only by the will of the god without the dictum of the guru not even a dry leaf can move writes hemat panji in sri sai satcharitra these core principles are highlighted in this divine sport of shri sai maharaj the more concerned and earnest a devotee is to meet his guru that early and easy will be the process of meeting says hemat panji 
the above description is given for us to understand the intense desire of kakaji vaidya in meeting shri sai baba and this also emphasizes the intention of the anant that is goddess sabda shrungi's ordain to kakaji vaidya to meet the sant that is shri sai baba of shirdi so this again affirms the fact that there is no difference between the sant and the anant parallel to this story is the episode that took place in shama's life he had the silver breast to offer to goddess sabda shrungi devi but he approached shri sai baba and pleaded him to accept this offering devotees might wonder what made shama to offer silver breast to lord sai baba one of the reasons is he considered shri sai baba as goddess sabda shrungi devi on the other hand shama has witnessed many divine plays of shri sai baba and those experiences has given him a very deeper insight of the divinity and sagacity of shri sai maharaj in the forthcoming chapters we will come across a story related to the goa gentleman out of the two people that came for darshan shri sai baba would ask dakshina from one of them and deny to accept from the other person immediately shama who was present there asked shri sai baba the reason for not accepting the second person's dakshana for which shri sai baba said the first person was indebted to lord datta so i had to ask and collect that money devotees in the previous episodes we have discussed in detail about the practice adopted by shri sai baba in asking dakshana from devotees the reason for asking dakshana from the devotees varied from person to person at times it would be to foretell them that the money that has been pending for them will be received by them shortly for another to remind the vow that they have made to offer money to god or goddess that's why shri sai baba would always say that the dakshana money thus collected must reach the right place for instance if a devotee has vowed to offer some money to lord datta and if he had not offered it then shri sai baba would ask him the same value of money as dakshana and tell him that this belongs to lord datta and now give my offering so whatever offering has to reach the respective god and goddess that money will be collected by shri sai baba and will be sent to the concerned deity this way the devotee is freed from his debt that is he is not due to offer anything to that deity his vow is fulfilled and he is relieved from all his dues shama was constantly in the presence of shri sai baba hence he has witnessed many such inscrutable divine leelas of shri sai maharaj he was also of the firm conviction that shri sai maharaj was his sapta shringi devi so he believed offering the silver breast to shri sai maharaj is as same as offering to the goddess whereas shri sai maharaj rather than accepting it instructed shama to go and offer it directly to the goddess at vani and affirmed the thought that the sant and anant are one and the same this truth was revealed by both anant and sant to their ardent devotees at the same time isn't this amazing devotees the nectar one can drink from these inexplicable stories is unlimited these stories are generously distributing wisdom 
to the listeners so please heed to them carefully and reap the blessings of both the sant and the anant who are one and the same therefore shama started to vani and upon reaching there he looked for the priest kakaji vaidya and he was not present at the temple so he traced out the house and knocked at his door recent years the goddess saptashringi devi's temple is flooded with thousands of devotees every day whereas in the olden days that is a century ago not many would visit this temple because it was on top of a hill that was almost 3600 feet high so the journey to this temple would be a very tedious and strainful one hence not many were able to trek the hill and have the darshan of the goddess now shama waited at the doorsteps of kakaji appavaidya's home he opened the door and inquired the whereabouts of shama for which shama replied i am madhavrav desh pande and have come from shirdi as soon as kakaji vaidya heard this response his body was in horripilation because he has been waiting desperately to go to shirdi the moment the word shirdi fell into his ears he hugged madhavrav desh pande his heart was filled with joy his eyes were brimmed with tears of gratitude towards the grace of the divine mother and shri sai baba shama was so thrilled and felt very happy to see the feelings of kakaji vaidya because he has come for submitting his offering to the goddess and the priest of the temple is longing to visit his beloved guru shri sai baba and has been waiting earnestly for a right companion to go to shirdi isn't this a stunning sport of the lord kakaji vaidya narrated the dictum of saptashringi devi in his dream vision to have the darshan of shri sai baba to get relief from his sufferings on the other hand shama told him the vows made by his mother how he got reminded and when he offered them to shri sai maharaj he was directed to go personally and submit it at the divine feet of goddess at vani <coughs> kakaji vaidya was thrilled to hear this both marveled at this divine coincidence and thanked the sant and anant their happiness reached no bounds kakaji vaidya took shama to sabdashringi devi's temple performed all the pujas submitted the offerings brought by shama and helped him to have a hearty darshan of the divine mother shama felt immensely happy and thanked kakaji appa vaidya now both started to shirdi they both alighted at kopargaon took bath in the holy river godavari and proceeded towards shirdi as soon as they stepped into dwaraka mai kakaji appa vaidya glimpsed at the divine form of shri sai baba that very moment his mind was filled with peace he felt as though he is in a very secured place and his senses attained calmness he realized that this is the purpose of the goddess to send him to shri sai samartar kakaji appa vaidya says shri sai samartar didn't tell a word he didn't bless with his divine hands didn't speak any consoling words no questions were asked usually when someone gives a sweet talk the listeners get immense happiness when we experience the grace of the guru and god our heart 
attains peace when we hear consoling words it gives us a soothing feeling but none of this happened in shirdi by mere darshan his mind became quiet and enjoyed absolute joy kaka ji appa vaidya marveled at the divinity of shri sai maharaj he stayed for nearly 12 days and enjoyed the grace poured upon him by shri sai baba the anant arranged for him to reap the blessings of the sant that made the fickleness of his mind disappear he wondered and enjoyed this strange feeling the stories of shri sai baba made him feel so contented he thanked the divine mother and shri sai baba with tears of grat- gr- gratitude for blessing him with this great darshan and went back to vani the core principle of this miracle is that the anant and the sant are one and the same this reminds me of another story says ramanathan brother let us listen to it now There was a great incarnation of Lord Dattatreya at Manik Nagar by named Shri Manik Prabhu. He was a poet saint. Let us hear to a miracle that happened in his life. There lived a devotee by named Sang Rama Rao at a place known as Sid Gopya. He belonged to the Lingayat sect that is the ardent worshippers of Lord Shiva. Sang Rama Rao was a gentleman and lived a righteous life. He had a business of lending loans for interest. The income he earned from this business was used wisely. He generously distributed the money to the poor and needy. Suddenly Sang Rama Rao developed intense stomach pain. He was unable to even have a morsel of food. so his hunger pangs were not satiated he couldn't even swallow a mouthful of food if he forcefully ate then he would throw up he grew thin and very weak he lost his peace of mind though he was affluent he was unable to even eat his meal owing to his sickness he tried all medications but all were futile His friends said this could be the bad effects of some evil spirit so they advised him to do some remedial measures he did some rituals to nullify but of no use few suggested him to chant the holy hymns of rudram and chamakam worship lord shiva and that might relieve him from his ailment but that also didn't bring any difference in his situation sang rama rao got dejected and besieged lord shiva for his mercy thus ho oh lord please grant me death i am unable to bear this pain why did my life got ruined in this manner Lord Shiva's heart melted listening to the hue and cry of his devotee. He appeared in his dream and stated, "The only medicine that could relieve you from your suffering is the Charana Tirtham, that is the sacred water got by washing the holy feet of Shri Manik Prabhu." Sangrama Rao woke up from his sleep and recalled the dream. During those years the poet saint Shri Manik Prabhu was residing in a forest known as Palki Van Sangrama Rao made his preparations to go and have darshan of the saint As soon as he went to the place Shri Manik Prabhu noticed him at a distance and said I knew that you have arrived here as per the dictum of Lord Shiva As soon as Sangrama Rao heard these words from Shri Manik Prabhu he gained confidence that he will get cured the anant that is Lord Shiva pronounced in his dream to go and take the Pad Tirth 
of the Sant Sri Manik Prabhu and the same has been affirmed by the Sant even without Sangrama Rao articulating it to him. Isn't this an amazing miracle? He had complete faith on Sri Manik Prabhu and he drank the sacred water collected by washing the holy feet of the Sant. His stomach became all right and was able to eat his food without any issues. He got completely relieved from the pain. This miracle underscores the fact that the Sant and the Anant are same and there is no difference between them. In the above two miracles, the Anant sends the devotee to the Sant for darshan. This confesses the infinite divine powers of the Sant. Getting back to the original thread, after illustrating the miracle experienced by Kakaji Appavaidya and Madhavrav Desh Pandey, Hemat Panji continues to narrate another divine sport related to the blessings reaped in the dream vision as this chapter itself is a collection of blessings through dreams. This is about Kushal Chandra Trahata, an ardent devotee of Sri Sai Maharaj. We have heard some incredible details related to him in Chapter 8 of Sri Sai Satcharitra. The association between Sri Sai Maharaj and Kushal Chand was very intimate. Whenever owing to work, if Kushal Chand was unable to come for Sri Sai Baba's darshan, then Sri Sai Maharaj would come to meet Kushal Chand. Such was the love of Sri Sai upon Kushal Chand. Rehata is 5 kilometers away from Shirdi. One afternoon after lunch, Kushal Chand was taking a nap. At that moment, Sri Sai Baba appeared in the dream of Kushal Chand and spoke thus, Kushal Chand, I need to see you, so immediately start to Shirdi. There is a belief that the dream that one gets during the early hours of morning will fructify and any dream that is dreamt in the afternoon will be futile. But the dreams related to Shirdi will not fall under this rule or belief, says Hemat Panji. It can be dreamt anywhere, anytime, but it will get fulfilled. So, in this case, the dream occurred in the afternoon when he took a nap after his lunch. But that dream became real. Let's see how this became true. That same moment at Shirdi, Sri Sai Maharaj spoke to Kaka Sahib Dikshit thus, Dikshit, you go to Rahata and tell Kushal Chand that it has been long time that I saw him. Hence, I wish to see him. So, I ask him to come to Shirdi immediately and bring him along with you. Instantly, Dikshit went to Rehata in a tonga. While Dikshit was about to enter the village border of Rehata, he saw Kushal Chand's son over there and asked if Kushal Chand was at home. He replied in affirmative and said, but as he didn't have a tonga to reach Shirdi, he was unable to go to have Sri Sai Baba's darshan. Hence, he told me to convey this message to Sri Sai Baba. Then Dikshit said, Oh, I have come for the same purpose. I will take your father to Shirdi. Devotees, isn't this an unfathomable divine sport of the Lord? Dikshit stopped the tonga at the doorsteps of Kushal Chand's home, went inside to deliver the message of Sri Sai Baba, hearing which Kushal Chand's eyes were filled with tears of joy and he narrated the dream vision to Dikshit Ji. Both were awestruck listening to the beautiful divine sport of Sri Sai Maharaj. They started to Shirdi and Kushal Chand had the darshan of Sri Sai Baba. Sri Sai Maharaj felt very happy to see Kushal Chand and 
Kushal Chand was greatly moved by the love of Sri Sai Baba. Thus, the meeting between Kushal Chand and Sri Sai Baba happened once in every 15 days. There was a significant reason for adhering to this time interval by Sri Sai Maharaj and this came to be known to the other devotees at a future date. What was that? And the Leelas connected to this will be discussed in the coming episode. Bow to Sri Sai. Peace be to all. Om Sai Ram